What's up, Owl Team? This is your science teacher, Mr. O, with your first ever in-class flip notes. Uh, usually these will not be done in class, but the first set will be, so let's get started. Every set of flip notes will go over the same overview with you. You can pause these at any time. You can make sure to listen to the whole set of notes. Sometimes people want to skip through them. Don't do that. Listen to the whole set of notes. Make sure your notes that you are writing down are neat, because these will be your notes to look back over and study from. If you cannot read your own handwriting, it's not going to be very useful if you're trying to study from them. If you have any questions about the notes, write them down to ask Mr. Owen to get back to class. That is the purpose of flip notes. If you are confused, make sure you write down your questions. I'll answer them happily when we get back to class together. And you can always revisit these notes for quizzes and tests. Um, it's a great, great way to study from, um, as long with using your study guides and other materials done in class. So before we get started, turn to your table of contents. You're going to update it using number three. And that's going to be general science and process skills vocabulary. Uh, we did numbers one and two together in class. Now we're on number three. And your table of contents should include this now. For this set of flip notes, all you will need is a piece of lined paper. So take out a piece of lined paper. First set of things we're going to talk about is general science vocabulary. These are words you'll see throughout the work we do in science. I'll be asking you to do these words um, in different tasks and in different ways, but you need to know what they mean for other things. Words that you're going to see are should not be new to you, so let's get started. The first word is analyze. In science, analyze means take it apart and look for trends or patterns. So if I tell you to analyze a map, you're going to take a, take a look at parts, look for trends and patterns in the map or in a lab. So these can be used in a variety of ways. The next word is evaluate. Evaluate means to be the judge and form an idea of amount, worth, significance, conditions, etc. You can evaluate a variety of things in a variety of ways. In science, most of the time you'd be looking at amounts, how big a deal those amounts are, what conditions are there, and when you evaluate things, you use all these things to form an idea. The next word is describe. Certainly not a word you've heard. Be um, this is not the first time you've heard this word, and you're going to tell about the item in detail. So in science, the more you describe, the more details you provide, the better you'll be. The next word is explain. By definition, it means make an idea clear by describing it in details and using facts to support your claim. So when I ask you to explain something, you have to describe it, just like the word before, in detail and use facts to help support your ideas when you're trying to explain things. The next word is a word you see often in language arts. It's summarize. In science, it's a brief statement of the main facts and points, just like it would be in language arts. Uh, you'll be asked to summarize a lot of things throughout the year. You need to know what this word means. Another word you've seen a lot is compare and contrast. You're going to tell about how two, more, two or more things are similar and different. So when you're comparing and contrasting, you're identifying things and how they're alike and how they're different. Just don't do the two things that are alike and without doing differences. When you compare and contrast, you have to do both. That wraps up general science vocab. Now we're going to do the next set of words called science process skills. These are skills that all scientists use in their work, and I'm going to expect you to learn how to use these effectively throughout the year in our work together. First uh, skill that you need to know is observe or observing. It is a description of what was actually perceived by you. This information is what we call qualitative data. Qualitative data means things using traits using your five senses. So when you observe things, you use your five senses. Sometimes you're able to use all five. Sometimes you're only able to use one or two of your senses. And if you don't know your five senses, please ask me when you get back to class. We call these observations. The next science skill you need to know is measuring. In science, you have to use standard measures or estimations to describe uh, particular details of an object or an event. This information is considered quantitative data because it's based on numbers. So when you see the word quantitative, that is number. So qualitative is descriptions using senses. Quantitative data is numbers-based data. The next word is inferring. You do this a lot in language arts. 
You'd be doing this a lot in science. It means formulating assumptions or possible explanations based upon observations. This is a little bit different than predictions because now you're using explanations based on what you see, hear, um, touch, smell, taste sometimes. So when you infer something, you're formulating an assumption or possible explanation of something based on what you use your five senses to do. The next science skill is classifying. You've been doing this since you were a kid. So this is grouping or ordering objects or events into categories based on characteristics or defined criteria, meaning how are things alike or different and you're sorting based on that. If I asked you to take a bag of Skittles and sort them based on color, you could sort them just based on the trait or criteria of color. If I asked you to line up in a line, you can sort yourselves based on age, height, uh, gender, likes, dislikes. It's how you classify different things. The next word is predicting. It's not a new word, but it's a science skill you have to master. It's guessing the most likely outcome of a future event based on a pattern of evidence, meaning it's just not a random guess. So I'm asking you to predict the weather and you're in July and you predict it's going to snow. That's not using a pattern of evidence to support that. You usually use in the south that it's going to be hot with a possible chance of a thunderstorm or rain. That's a pattern of evidence. Next word is communicating. Using And the definition of communicating is using words, symbols, or graphics to describe an object, action, or event. You use this with each other or with yourselves or with me. You communicate on a daily basis. Sometimes you speak it. Sometimes you draw it. Sometimes you use symbols um, like in math. So we use communication a lot. And this is the end of your first flip notes. Uh, remember, make sure they're neat. And I will check them when they're done when you get back to class. In this case, I'm just going to check them while you're doing them in class. Hopefully you enjoyed your first set of flip notes.